In our previous video, we talked about strategies for parsing JSON. In this video, we're going to actually do some implementation based on what we learned before. So first of all, we know we need to create a class, which we're going to call plant. And the class called plant is going to mimic what our JSON looks like fairly closely. So let's go ahead and start with that. I'm going to run to Visual Studio and under Consume JSON, I'm going, this is a brand new project, a fresh project I've created. So under Consume JSON, I'm going to say add class and we'll simply call it, we'll give it just a moment here. We'll call it plant.cs and I'll choose add. Okay, and now we'll say, uh, we'll say int ID string, whoops, sorry, string genus, string species, I have to spell very carefully here, string cultivar, and string common. And we simply want to confirm that this looks like our JSON stream. So just one moment, we'll bring, bring that up. Okay. And sure enough, ID, genus, species, cultivar, in common. So we're looking good there. Uh, I will go ahead and click the light bulb here, and I'm going to say encapsulate field for each of these. I'll take just one moment. And we see they've now been encapsulated, so that looks good. Okay, next we want to say add, and we want to make another class, and this class is our plant collection class. So plant collection. Okay, in plant collection, we are simply going to give this a property and we'll say private list plant. Remember that's our collection of plants and we'll say plants. Okay, uh, now we'll click and we'll say encapsulate field just like so. So we get a nice convenient getter setter type method and we go ahead and save all. Okay, wonderful. Uh, next thing that we need to do is we need to make some way we can access our JSON. So I'm gonna right click, just confirm I don't have a form yet, and sure enough, I do not. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say add and we'll say web form and we'll say uh, read JSON just like so. That will give us a nice little ASPX. Okay, so I go to design view and really I could read this JSON in a, in a load. So like a, a page load event would be fine. So I can go to the code behind of my, uh, of my page. So read JSON, we'll go to the code behind here and sure enough, we have our page load event. Okay, now within the page load event, we have to go look at the recipe for this because uh, this one is a little bit tricky. So within the page load event, we need a using statement. Uh, we need our little plant collection, our JSON convert. We need quite a few things. So I'm going to toggle back and forth between these. So using, and we'll say var, web client equals new web client okay and open curly close curly okay now web client it says i don't know who you are so i click on the light bulb and is it going to help me out sure enough it gives me a namespace where web client lives okay now web client is how we get access to some kind of internet resource so i'll say web client dot download uh, what was our method there? I've already forgotten. Download string. Okay, download string. And then I simply pass it in the URL uh, for my JSON stream, which is going to be minus the view source. It's going to be what follows here, at least for a red bud. So, okay, double quote, double quote, paste. And let's just make sure this is properly formed. Uh, we'll go ahead and put in HTTP on the front, just like so, that looks good. Okay, and terminate with the semicolon. So that looks pretty good. I'll simply say string raw JSON equals, just a moment, JSON equals web client dot download string. So now uh, I'll put a comment to this effect. I'll say get a string representation of our JSON. Okay, that looks good. Okay, next we need the tricky line where we actually parse it out. So that's where we say JSON convert dot deserialize object. Now a trick with this, JSON convert dot deserialize object. Remember that we need to put in the generic identifier. We need to put in the class plant collection, which represents that very highest level of our JSON. So plant collection contains a list of plant objects. The list of plant objects contains, guess what? Plant objects. We pass to this the raw JSON stream. 
Now, I'm itching a little bit because I have a red line here. It says, I don't know who JSON convert is. And this actually is something that doesn't come bundled with Visual Studio. We might have to go grab it. So let's see, generate property, generate field, gosh. No, I don't want to generate anything. This is a library that I want to use. So uh, what I'll do to get the library is right click on consume, consume JSON and then click manage NuGet packages or Nugget, I guess that is. Uh, now I'm going to look for, uh, we'll go to browse and I'm going to say JSON. Oh, take a look. It's the first one, newtonsoft.json. Uh, uh, that's the one that we want. So 8.96 million downloads, quite a few. Let's go ahead and hit the download button and let it install. It'll take just a moment. And with that, it is installed. So let's take a look back at our page one more time. Uh, where'd we go here? We want to uh, read JSON, ASPXCS. Okay, now let's see if we have options now that we didn't have before. Yes, we do. Using newtonsoft.json, we do that and you see the line goes away. Now, one interesting thing, what does this return? Remember, it's kind of funny because the generic identifier that we see that we provided here is also the return type. So if I go back to source code, it's going to return a plant collection. So I'll say plant collection plant collection equals json convert dot deserialize object. So let's say convert the json string to a series of objects. Okay, and then finally we will uh, do some computation. In a separate video, I discuss how to take this JSON collection and show it in a list box. Uh, I'll refer you to my YouTube channel to see that video. I won't cover that here just because that's another 15 minutes and I want to keep this video concise. So in the nature of keeping this concise, I'm simply going to say console.write or write line either way is fine. And I'm going to pass in a plant collection. Okay, the variable plant collection and then dot plants, which is the collection of plants in that plant collection. And then we're going to say count, which is the size. The reason for doing this is this puts it on a separate line, which allows me to do one of my favorite things in the world, which is debug. So let's go ahead and set a breakpoint, uh, save our work, and let's launch and let's see how this works. And sure enough, the browser is launched. Let's go through and debug. You'll see this will go fairly quickly. So I choose F10 to step over, step over, download our string. Let's take a look at this string. You see raw JSON, if you see it here, you can also see it down in the variables tab. Uh, if I mouse over it, you can see a whole bunch of text. Uh, remember a couple things from here. Just pick off a couple of numbers, maybe 83 genus Circus canadensis, something like that. Uh, so we know we have Circus canadensis, Eastern red bud, you see lavender twist red bud, you see a few different red buds. Now, whatever you remembered, take a look for it in this stream. Here's 83, Circus canadensis, Eastern red bud. Uh, so you see that sure enough, we have obtained the data that we wish to obtain. Now we do the parse. This is where we get a little bit nervous because we have to make sure that we have created a series of objects that align with this structure. And I will say, this is a JSON stream that I wrote not all JSON is going to look like this. Yours might have a different series of objects and arrays. Just use the pattern I've given you and interpret that as needed. When you see square bracket, think strongly typed uh, list or collection. When you see curly, think of some kind of class, some kind of object. Do that, you'll be in good shape. I press F10 and this is what I really like to see. I mouse over and take a look at plant collection. You see plant collection has an attribute called plants, which has 19 members. Let's take a look at our JSON stream. And what do we have? Uh, remember we start counting with zero. So if you include number zero, sure enough, we have 19 members here, 19 objects, looking really good. Now let's peek into these and let's take a look at what they look like. If I look at item number zero and I click Eastern Redbud Circus Canadensis. If I look at item number 14, what do we get? Weeping Redbud Heart Pink Heartbreaker. Let's compare that to our data. We have Eastern Redbud Circus Canadensis and then number 14, if I get down there roughly, uh, Pink Heartbreaker 
Weeping Redbud. See, see, sure enough, we have taken JSON from a raw stream of data and we have turned that into a series of objects. So that'll wrap us up for this video. In our next video, we'll see how to take these objects and put them into a list box. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.